Every problem in this world is the result of being separated from God. And I will tell you this, the presence of God is the solution for everything and anything that is happening in your life, in your family or in this world. The presence of God is the solution to everything. You know, to God, no matter how dark your situation is, it makes no difference because it's because he is light. And whatever darkness is in your life right now, his light is enough to overshadow it. And that's why we read our Bibles today, because the entrance of his word brings light. No matter how dark your situation is, no matter how lonely you feel, no matter how discouraged you feel, no matter what you're fighting against, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what seems to be getting a foothold in your life. Believe me when I say this is that God will not let you out of the palm of his hand. He will hold you with his righteous right hand. He will he will never let you go. In fact, the Bible says I will never leave you in Hebrews chapter 13, verse five. He says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And then look at what he says in verse six. Therefore, we can boldly say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Own the darkness and you will not fear. Own the darkness and you will not fear. And the reason I talk about owning the darkness and the reason I'm calling it that is because to God, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Darkness is no match for the light of God. Do you know that, that light and darkness don't struggle? Light doesn't have to fight darkness. You know, if you're in a dark room, there's only one thing you have to do. Turn on the light and the darkness doesn't fight you, debate you, have an argument with you. The darkness doesn't you know, cry, that doesn't moan and groan. It just leaves every time. It never wins. Light always wins. And the entrance of his word brings light and God's presence brings light. And God's love is light. And Jesus is the light of the world. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I really am on a mission to empower God's people to awaken, to awaken God's people to who they really are and what God has done for them and what we can do with that power that he's given us, because too many Christians are ignorant without knowledge. And Hosea chapter four, verse six says, my people look at what God says. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not for a lack of God's presence, but for a lack of knowledge. There's so many beliefs that we have in our mind that we have bought into that are lies. The belief that God might distance himself from you if you don't pray enough if you don't read enough or if you sin, because isn't it true that sin separates us from God? In fact, I'll prove it to you. It says I know we've gone over this, but in Isaiah chapter fifty nine, verse two, Isaiah fifty nine, verse two, he says your iniquities have separated you from God, from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you. There is this gap and that God is over here and we're over here because our sins Adam's sin and our sins have separated us from God. But the beauty is, is that Jesus has solved this problem. The pro Remember, being separated from God is spiritual death, that when God said to Adam and Eve, the day you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. Remember that the day you eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. But they didn't die physically and they didn't die emotionally. In fact, if anything, they, they, they had even stronger emotions. They had the emotion of fear. They had the emotion of, of anger. They had the emotion of feeling insecure and inferior. They had, they had the emotion of trying to dominate one another. They had the emotion that all they had the emotion emotions of sadness and sorrow. 
All of these things came when they were separated from God. This is what I'm trying to say, that all of the world's problems, every problem in this world is the result of being separated from God. And I will tell you this, the presence of God is the solution for everything and anything that is happening in your life, in your family or in this world. The presence of God is the solution to everything. But religion has told us, well, you got to fight your way into the presence of God. You got to sing your way into the. Let me tell you something. If we got to sit, figolo, figolo, figolo. If we got to sing our way into the, I can't even say that right. If we got to sing our way into the presence of God, I'm going to hell. Some of you got good voices. You're going to be suspended between heaven and hell, but you will never get to heaven with your voice. No matter how good your voice is, no matter how good your song is. You can sing louder and you can try harder, but you cannot. Nothing. None of that can get you into the presence of God. None of that gets you access. Amen. None of that gets you access. Amen. What gets you access? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. But but back, you know, back up here for a moment. So he says the day you eat from it, Genesis 2, 16, excuse me, Genesis chapter two, verse 17. The day you eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. You will surely die. And yet a few verses later, they ate from it, but they didn't die physically and they didn't die in their soul. So how did they die? They died spiritually. And what is and what is spiritual death? Separation from God. What is death? Death is separation from God. That's why when you're born again, the Bible says you have eternal life. That means you will never be separated from God, which means you will never die. You know, you're going to live forever, right? You know why? Because you're no longer separated from God. Separation from God is death. So you will never die. The moment you're born again, you will not die. You will never die. But they died spiritually because man is made up of three parts. Remember, spirit, soul and body. So they were alive. Adam and Eve were alive, spirit, soul and body. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they died. One third of them died. They died spiritually. They were still alive physically and they were still alive emotionally, but they were dead spiritually. And then they gave birth to every human being after them that came into this world was made up of three parts. But there but one third of every human being that's ever been born is dead, is dead. The, they're spiritually dead. Every human being is born spiritually dead. We're alive to our senses, which is our emotions or our body. We're alive to our to our emotions, which is our soul. We're alive to our feelings, which is our soul. We're, we're alive to our desires, which is our body, our physical. We're alive to appetites and tastes, which is our body. Think about it. We, we, we were born into this world alive in our soul and alive in our body, but dead in our spirit. And that's why Jesus said we must be born again. When we get a hold of this, it'll bring us into some expectations. When you get a hold of what the presence of God will do for your life, it, it, it will it will it will bring you so much peace and so much joy and it will bring you so much confidence. That's why that's why the, the writer of Hebrews, which we believe to be Paul, the apostle, said, this is why we may boldly say, Woo, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Everything's going to be all right. Why? Because God said himself, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If he said, sometimes I'm going to leave, sometimes I'm going to forsake you. If you don't pray enough, I'm going to leave. If you don't fast enough, I'm going to leave. If you're not holy enough, I'm going to leave. Boy, we would just be bouncing like a ping pong. We would just go and be back and forth, just trying to just trying to find out how we can get God to stay. Thank God we don't have to do anything to get God to stay. He says, I'm not leaving. I'm moving in. I'm bringing in all my furniture. I'm bringing the Holy Spirit. I'm bringing my gifts. I'm bringing the armor. I'm bringing the power. I'm bringing everything you need pertaining to life and godliness. I'm bringing the wisdom. I'm bringing it all I'm moving in to you. And I am not letting go. Look at what he says. Revelation 3:20. Look at what he says in Revelation chapter three, verse 20. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. 
you got to understand me. I come from a dark background. I had a dark upbringing. I, I had I came from a lot of damage in my soul, whether it was caused by people, whether it was caused by the devil, whether it was caused, most, most of it was caused by myself. But you know what? I know this is that Jesus can change anybody. And he can save anybody, forgive anybody and heal anybody if you if you'll start believing that it's him. You know, when I was younger as a Christian, I used to want to take credit for good things happening in my life. And the older I've gotten as a believer and the more I've understood about God, the 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 the, the more and the safer I feel knowing that anything good in my life Amen. is from God. Amen. That that it's his mercy, yeah. it's his grace. What's the difference between mercy and grace? Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve, like salvation and love and healing and power and strength. He gives you what you don't deserve. What's mercy? Mercy is God not giving you what you do deserve. Hell, judgment, punishment, disease, death. He that's mercy that he withholds what we deserve. And grace is he gives what we don't deserve. And that's why we can come boldly. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says we can come boldly to the throne of his what? His grace. Hebrews 4, 16, it says we can come boldly to the throne of his grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. It's not a far journey to the throne. He said we can come boldly to the throne of grace. You know, it's not a far journey. You know why? Because Ephesians two, verse six, look at what it says. Ephesians chapter two, verse six. And he raised us up together <laughs> and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You got to check the seating chart. You're, you're not seated in the back. You're not seated way over somewhere unnoticeable. He has raised us up together with him and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What does that mean in the heavenly places? We're not in heaven yet, but we're in the heavenly places. What does that mean? We are in dominion. We reign over all spiritual power that is in this world. Amen. We have more power than the devil. That's why the Bible says submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places because you're no longer separated from God. So when the devil sees you, he sees Jesus because you're with your joined together with him. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're a conjoined twin of Jesus that no surgeon can operate on. No devil in hell can bust you up between you and Jesus. You're one with him. United with him, one heir with him, joint heir. You're a joint heir. That means you're joined together with him. That means you're a twin of Jesus. You're a you're a conjoined twin. That means everywhere he goes, you go everywhere you go. He goes, you are not there. Nothing will separate you. From God's presence ever again. Adam's sin cannot separate you from God. And your sins cannot separate you from God because Jesus dealt with Adam's sin in John 129, according to John 129. And Jesus dealt with your sin and my sins, all of our sins 
according to Revelation chapter one, verse five. So guess what? There is no gap anymore. There is no separation anymore. That's why Romans chapter eight, verse thirty eight says this. Nothing can separate us, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor powers. Nothing, no other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And God is love. So if you can't be separated from his love, you can't be separated from him because he is love. You say, oh, why is that so important, Pastor? I just came here to learn the three secrets to pay my bills. I just came here to figure out how to be a better husband. I just came here to figure out how to be healed. This is how you get it all. This is the whole kit and caboodle. This is how this is the whole this is this is this is the the, the big this is the the, the, the the getting the biggest prize. It says in Romans 832, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? With him. With him, him with us, we have everything. Us with him, we have everything. Him with us, we have everything. You see, you stop worrying when you truly are convinced he is with you. You stop worrying when you're truly convinced there is no separation. Ephesians chapter two, verse 13. Look at what he says. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near. How? By what? By praying enough, by reading enough, by being holy enough. I got one no here. Come on. <laughs> by what? We're, we're brought near by what? The blood of Christ. So the blood of Christ, which triumphs over everything, has brought you near to God where you are inseparable now because the blood covenant, you and him are one now. God and man have mixed their blood together in Christ. And they are one now and you are one with him because you're in Christ. So now you now he will never leave you or forsake you. Now God is with you. And he will never separate from you. And you are never going to nothing you can do can separate you from him. You say, but then we can then, then, then the sky's the limit, man. We can just do whatever we want and just be OK. And the, the, the whole point is, is you have to realize how vast God's love and grace is before you can live in it. You have to realize how how great it is. Like you have to be able to know that, yeah, you could commit some sinful behaviors today. And still not be separated from God. You have to know that. And frankly, you got to you got to wake up and realize you commit sins every day. You have a bad thought. You looked at your watch today to get out. When are we going to leave? That's a sin to me, man. I don't know about how God feels about it. You've had a thought of lust. You've had a, you've, you've had a thought of anger. You thought about committing adultery. You thought about fornication. You thought about lying, cheating, stealing. You say, well, I didn't do those things. See, that's what they were so self-righteous. Yeah. OK, you didn't do those things because you didn't have the opportunity. Oh, I'm so holy. I didn't commit adultery. No, just nobody wanted you. <laughs> Remember, I come from a rough background, so just, you know, <laughs> give me a little grace. We got to wake up, people. And we got to realize we sin all the time and yet it's already been washed and it cannot separate you. I'm not encouraging you to sin. I'm encouraging you to be aware and awakened to the presence of God, because and, and let me close with the, a list here. Here is what you can begin to expect when you become aware that God is with you. Ready? We're going to go through a quick list here. Um, number one. Total life blessing. I don't have time to get into it. You can look it up later. Second Samuel, chapter six, verses one through eleven. Total life blessing wherever the presence of God is. 
there is blessing. You say, then why is it if God is with me, then why aren't I experiencing blessing? Because of a lack of knowledge. It's that's why I'm that's why my mission this month is to make you aware of God's presence, that he is with you. Total life blessing. Number two, the mountains melt like wax in the presence of God. Psalm 97, verse five. What mountain do you have? You need to you need to you need to introduce your mountain to the presence of the Lord. And you say, well, how do I do that? Because you're in his presence by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, you need to say mountain melt because you and me, there isn't room for both of us. The presence of God is in me and the presence of God makes my mountains melt like wax. And therefore you're melting in Jesus name. See, we have to wake up expecting these things. You see, we got all these tricks. Here's how I can be happy. Here's how I can have joy. Here's how I can get the mountain to move. But if you will just awaken to God's presence, which will never leave you or or forsake you. Joy will come. Psalm 1611 in his presence is fullness of joy. We went over that. P the power of healing. Luke chapter five, verse 17, because of the presence of the Lord was with them. The power of the Lord was present to heal. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So God's presence brings healing so you can expect healing. Um, we could just go on and on. The enemy, your enemies flee. Psalm chapter nine, verse three. Your enemies flee at the presence of God. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. You, we need to wake up expecting our enemies to flee, expecting our mountains to melt, expecting joy to come, expecting peace to come, expecting healing to come. We need to wake up every day and declare I am expecting healing because of the presence of the Lord. I'm expecting my mountains to melt like wax today because of the presence of the Lord. Rather than I got to make sure I cross all my T's and dot all my eyes. There's one T that had to be crossed, and that was the cross where Jesus died on by his blood being shed. You are now in the presence of God and the presence of God is in you and there is there is no separation. It's a myth. There is no separation between you and God ever, ever again. Wow. Well, this is the greatest news of all. God's presence changes everything. His presence is the solution to everything. And if you're born again, Hebrews 10, 19 says you are now in the presence of God by the blood of Jesus, not anything you can do to stop it, but by the blood of Jesus, you and God are inseparable. Now, with that awareness that his presence is with you, every issue in your life begins to change. His presence has been with you since the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But today you got it. It became real to you. And there's nothing that can separate you from God's presence. You can expect more peace. The word of God says he will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. You can plan on a joy filled life every day and every night. The, in Psalms, it says in his presence is fullness of joy. His presence is powerful. And now, listen, if you've ever been to a third world country and wondered how so many people in a poor nation can have so much peace and even happiness and joy in the midst of so many challenges. I've been to these to many of these places and it's because they understand the power of God's presence for some of them. It's all they have. And but you have it, too. And you can walk in this joy and you can walk in this power, in this peace. And as you know, I'm on a mission to empower God's people, to awaken people to their true worth, to who they really are and what God has done for them and what we can do together with the power that God's given us. And I'm committed to doing that through every means possible, including television, technology. In fact, right now we're producing solar powered audio Bibles that are being built in the nation of Israel. Every unit will include the entire Bible and many of my major messages translated into 10 different languages. And my goal with your help, is to see 30 million souls reach for the glory of God. And before I finish today, I want you to know I've selected a couple of really great teachings and a collection of material that will deepen your understanding on living in God's presence. Plus, your gift today is going to be used to produce and distribute these solar Bibles to millions of people. Here's my announcement to tell you more, and I'll be right back. 
The Bible teaches us that true Christianity is expressed in the things that we do to get the good news of God's love and saving grace to those who are forgotten and minimized. Jesus expressed this by saying, whatever you have done for the least of these, you have done it unto me. Will you help Gregory Dickow reach these precious people from around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Your gift today of $30 or $60 or more will help us make an eternal difference in the lives of people around the world. With your financial support, we are sending solar-powered audio Bibles to the least of these, people who are blind or can't read. There are an estimated 1 billion people in the world who cannot read and an estimated 39 million who are blind. That is why Gregory Dickow is asking you to stand in faith with him today to make a difference in the lives of these precious people. You can do that with a special gift of $30 or more. With your gift, we will send you the fresh off the press two CD series, Healing the Soul, which includes today's teaching in its entirety. With an exceptional and sacrificial gift of $60 or more, we will send you Healing the Soul, along with Gregory Dickow's teaching series, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Plus, as a special gift for calling in the next hour, Gregory Dickow will send you his book, Triumphing Over Loneliness. This practical and liberating brand new book will reveal the biblical patterns you can follow to receive a more significant measure of God's healing power for your mind, will, and emotions, and finally put a nail in the coffin of loneliness forever. Don't wait. We need to hear from you today so that we can reach as many people as possible with the love of God. Our operators are standing by to take your call, or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, I really want to encourage you to call one of my operators right now in the next few minutes and take advantage of this special collection of teaching, Healing the Soul, which will change your life. And don't be afraid of the dark. It really is all about God's presence. And you don't have to do anything to earn God's presence. It's an awareness that this will get in you and it will saturate your heart, your soul, your mind, your body. And remember, you're going to help me reach precious people who have been forgotten and minimized in society simply because they can't read. Let's reach them with the gospel. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person watching this broadcast. Give them hope today that their life is going to get better. Give them hope today that you are on their side. Give them hope today that your presence is inseparable from their everyday life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, uh, contact me. Reach me on Facebook. Reach me on Instagram. I can't wait to connect with you and don't miss our next broadcast. Remember to set your DVR so you never have to miss one of them. And I can't wait to see you then. God bless.